Good morning. It's Wednesday, September 27th, 2023. My name is Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Through the Eyes of Innocence, and our scripture is Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18. The tax collector writes, About that time the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a little child to him and put the child among them. Then he said, I tell you the truth, unless you turn from your sins and become like little children, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. So anyone who becomes as humble as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf is welcoming me. There's an enormous difference between childish and childlike. Childishness is unthinking, except for pleasing self and having a dry diaper. Childlike is to capture the wonder and joy of good things, and rather to be appalled at the monstrous evil it encounters, choosing to enter good and destroy the nightmare of darkness. C. E. Montague wrote the novel Rough Justice. The hero, Braun, is age four when he first visits church. That day was the first he'd ever heard of the crucifixion of Jesus. He was so horror-struck that he thought the whole church must be in tears. But when the service ended, instead of the hushed awe that he expected, a deafening clatter of small talk broke out. Braun was astonished to find Christian people laughing and talking as if no tragedy had taken place. Now it may be that having one's eyes open to the truth is necessary for children to learn the so-called ways of the world. But it saddens one to think of the disappearing spark of innocence one can easily see in the face of a child's trusting, joyful face. This is what God must have seen that day in the garden when Adam and Eve hid themselves after they first sinned. Innocent eyes that once walked in complete trust with their Maker were now clouded by guilt, shame, and suspicion. Perhaps it was one of the disciples' children that Jesus called to himself that day and sat that little one upon his knee. He told the disciples the answer to their question about who is greatest in God's kingdom was what they saw, an innocent trust of being held in complete safety, unafraid, expectantly waiting for the next good moment. The little one, unaware of the gravity of the question or the depth of Jesus' answer, simply sat there and wondered in that moment, am I a part of that kingdom? Jesus was telling his disciples to lose the corporate mindset of climbing the ladder of achievement and becoming like that little child, only concerned to being affirmed as belonging, wondering, enjoying, and seeking the embrace of a father's love. I'm certain the disciples came away from that morning's lesson, examining every word their master had said, pondering what they were still missing, and if it was ever going to get easier following Jesus. And isn't that the way it is with children trying to get some understanding with their parents? Yet parents sometimes forget what it's like to be that child. We forget how much that embrace means. In our own sinful nature, we cannot see through innocent eyes. Our vision is blurred by guilt and shame. It's impossible to return to Eden once the door has been flung open. And that is Jesus' whole point here. He was there to be the pathway back into the Father's embrace because there was no other way. His whole mission was to transcend the impossibility of return to innocence by destroying evil's monstrous claim on our souls. That would be what happened at Calvary's cross when Jesus uttered those three blood-stained words, It is finished. For you today, when a door has been opened, nothing is truly settled. For there to be fulfillment of what was intended on the other side of that door, one must, of his own choosing, walk through the door. 
God has granted us free will, a choice to walk back into his embrace, or to remain on the outside of the door, to not walk through, to stay in our success mode, climbing the ladder to nowhere but frustration and ulcers, and eventually eternal separation from him. So, what do you choose? You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.